Excellent. All right. Let's get into internal assessment three. Yay. Thank you so much for moving and getting into groups for me. You'll appreciate it at the end. What we're going to do today is have a very quick consideration of genre, using that term loosely. We're going to brainstorm some example assessment tasks. And hopefully, we may not get to the last bit, we're going to complete a textual analysis activity. Everyone has got a group. Everyone's introduced themselves. Yes? We're good? Excellent. OK. When we're starting to create this IA3, our imaginative, creative response, three things that I think we really need to take into consideration when we're deciding what we do for this task. Obviously, the first one is choosing that literary text that is going to be the springboard for that assessment. And that's really important. Our students can't just write a short story in isolation based on whatever topic they want. That's not going to meet the task requirements. So choosing that text that forms, informs the teaching and learning and then informs the assessment is very important. For me, the second thing about it is that it is a supervised task. And that, to me, is going to change the way that I create that assessment than if it was an assignment that my students did where they had access to drafting, where they had access to me. And lastly, not only is it a supervised task, but there is one week's notice of task. And again, that's going to inform the kind of task I create for my students based on, on what I know are their strengths and weaknesses. Now, everyone's got a hand down in front of them, do they? Excellent. That's for you to keep some notes on. And we're going to move into our first activity. So, Katie has very kindly showed us what the QCAA has come up with as some suggested genres for this task, some suggested examples. And on one side of your piece of paper, I've given you a little table where you can take some notes in your group. So this is our first group activity. I want you to brainstorm the kind of genres that students could write in in this task. And I want you to think for your cohort, so you might have some different cohorts in your group, what's going to be the strengths and weaknesses of that genre? So for example, if I'm looking at a short story, the strengths for my cohort might be that there are lots of examples that I'm going to be able to show my students. A weakness is, is that my students really, really struggle to come up with ideas for a short story in a very short amount of time in, 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 to plan that activity. And they might actually spend a whole week coming up with an idea and not actually you know, start writing and planning that. I'm going to give you some time in your groups to fill out that table and have a bit of discussion of genre. Off you go. Great discussions, great questions. Some questions about more specific related to the task we might get to after our next activity, which is more about specific tasks. Let's stick to just the genre. Did anyone come up with something a bit different to what we've been shown as ideas? So short story, monologue, script, intervention. Anyone come up with something a bit different or wanted to ask a question about genre? Yes? Stream of conscious narrative based on a novel. I guess kind of like a short story, but a little bit different. Yeah, definitely. Change of perspective of a character. Yes. Oh, we'll get the mic, sorry, so that way we can... Eulogy or wedding speech? Please, please step up, Katie, and say no if that's wrong as well. No. And I guess that's also why we have endorsement too, to, to double check. Good. Anyone else? So there's always, a, you know, if you're going in the narrative direction, there's always a, the possibility of a recount or anecdote where the 
So for a recount or anecdote where the focus is not so much on resolving the complication but presenting emotional reactions to a series of events. Mm -hmm. Good. Any interesting strengths or weaknesses that people have found with some of the genres that we've come up with with their cohorts that they like to share or perhaps that they've heard from their group that they thought, oh, I think everyone should hear this? Or, yes, one over here? No? Please. <laughs> you can pretend someone else said it. We were, I'm going to pretend someone else said it. We were talking about narrative monologues that students find it difficult to perhaps find the inner voice of the character and uh, suggested that they're very into YouTubers. If you can find a YouTuber speaking on an issue, so for example, the school shootings was very topical and a number of YouTubers were speaking on that. So instead of doing their makeup tutorial on blushes that week, they were talking on that. Um, that's already a monologue on an issue that they would understand and would start use that perhaps as a point to begin the journey. Great. Um, not particularly genre specific, but we talked about the idea of whatever genre you choose, how is that for your mapping? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about how, for example, short story tends to be a fairly straightforward one to map back throughout um, your years, um, compared to something like, I don't know, something that's just, um, you know, like something like a vlog or anything, you know. Um, and the other consideration we talked about was things like um, nailing the genre and teacher skills associated with that. So with some of them, we've got, um, you know, genres like blogs or vlogs that we have a lot of teachers that might not be quite as comfortable with that. Um, and, and how we then, you know, address that, upskill people, things like that. Excellent. All right, so we might keep moving on and get into a bit more nitty gritty about specifics with assessment. And we might also have some conversations just from my walking around before about really understanding a little bit more what this assessment means. And I can tell you my interpretation of it as a teacher. Um, and we can have arguments about that or not, if we like. So I've just come up with a couple of example units, texts, and assessment, and my interpretation of what the, I guess, scene element is. So if it's seen, the task is seen one week prior to the assessment happening, what does that mean? How can I still teach that genre to my students? I'm a big believer in, in modelling. I always model the kind of assessment students have to do. I get my students to do the assessment in groups together. Um, for the external assessment, my kids will be writing um, essays, not necessarily complete essays, but they will do um, things for homework in groups, paragraphs of essays, and I'll model that for them. So I expect that they'll be doing it for this imaginative task as well. But there needs to be a, an element that it remains unseen until that week before so that they only have a week to work on that assessment. So, an example unit one, human experience of war, and I'm going to look at the poetry of Wilfred Owen. I could look at um, poems by other poets on the text list too, related to that topic. My assessment is a short story that reinforces or challenges a value, attitude or belief about war, presented in one of Owen's poems, transformed into a contemporary setting. During my unit, I'm going to be looking at a range of poems with my students, at least five according to the syllabus, and we're going to look at what it means to take ideas from the poem and transform that into a short story. When it comes to the assessment, I'm going to give them two options, two poems that they can choose from, and we will not have done any kind of modelling or unpacking of those poems. I won't be picking the poem that, that I modelled for them or I got them to do in groups. So obviously I'm going to have a couple of poems that we haven't done that to so that they don't necessarily work out which two poems I'll have to choose from. Does that make sense? Second assessment task. Looking at representations of power. My text focus is Hamlet. I'm sure no one's going to do Hamlet for this unit, but it, something that I already do at my school. They're going to have to write a monologue from a minor character that offers a new insight into their power relations in the play. We're going to look at 
lots of different characters in the play at lots of different points. I could do this a number of ways. I could give them one week's notice of two characters they could choose from. I could give them one week's notice of where in the play they must insert that monologue and give them a choice of two characters. Another example assessment task. I'm going to look at how landscape is used as character in a novel study of the white earth. I'm going to do a narrative intervention that fills a gap or challenges a silence in the text. So we are going to look at some of the gaps or silences in that text. I'm going to model how to plan and, and, and write a story that fills a gap or silence. I'm going to do some work with my students around creative writing to fill gaps or silences. And then a week's notice of the intervention point that they will fill that gap or silence for. So that's a couple of ways that you can do this task. Still being able to work with that genre with your students, but still giving an element that is unseen until one week before the task. Does that make sense? Good, all right. What we're gonna do before we come back and talk as a big group is we're gonna do a little bit more group work. So some of you will come from schools that already have ideas. Maybe you're almost there, but you've just got a couple of things you wanna sort out. You can do that in your group today. Maybe you've got two ideas and you're not sure, or you've got two texts and you're not sure. Some of you might not have started planning, or you might be teachers that aren't quite sure what your hot is doing. This session is now designed to give you ideas, to brainstorm ideas from scratch if you're not sure what you want to do, or to bounce ideas off people in your group so that you can refine, or just get ideas from other people. So share your school's ideas, and or come up with some new ideas um, for this assessment. So I'm gonna give you about 10 minutes to work on that in your group as well. And Katie and I will be walking around as well if you do have any questions that you wanna ask before we come back as a group too. We've got the paper Am I on? No. Hello, there we go. <laughs> I hope that was a really rewarding conversation to have with people, to share your ideas, but also hear what other people are thinking. Um, we've probably got a couple of minutes for questions. Um, let's keep it for now specific to this task, and then we can ask more gen general ones um, after that. So if you've got a question or you've got heard a really good idea from someone else that you think everyone should know about, let's, let's do that. Matt, do you want to get on that? Julie, do you want to get on the other mic? <laughs> oh, questions up there, good. I don't know how to handle that Thank you so much. I have a question from an outsider. This is an imaginative text that they have to create. Yes. So what if it's an interpretive text set in an imaginative... You were asking about different forms that might... Um, be explored? What if it is an interpretive text that is created imaginatively about a fake character? How does that come So, out? for example, um, like you might create like a media article, you're saying, but, no, no, but you've created it so it's imaginative. I'm, I'm not a QCAA person, so Katie might want to step in when she's finished having a conversation and that's all right. <laughs> um, so, question. And I have this from somewhere else as well. If it's a creative task, if students created an interpretative genre, but it's creative, so they wrote a newspaper article, but it's, but it's imaginative, they've created it and it's new. My, I would say no because it's not a creative genre, but... It's a really good question. <laughs> I suppose the question is, does it allow the students to demonstrate the assessment objectives across the range of performance levels, as well as the task specifications? And what they're required to do, isn't it, is to, and I'm not going to be able to regurgitate this, sorry, but create perspectives and representations of concepts, identities, times, places, etc. Um, create... 
oh, where's my syllabus? It's up there somewhere. But you know what I mean. It's those objectives. Thank you. It's objectives three, four, and five, isn't it? Thank you very much, Jennifer. Make use of the ways cultural assumptions, attitudes, values, and beliefs, etc., underpin text and invite audiences to take up positions. Use aesthetic features and stylistic devices to achieve purposes. So if you can foresee that the genre works for that, okay. But I'd, I'd be interested to see the task and which character you're sort of developing or, or, or what it is that you're offering um, that is creative beyond the springboard text in employing that genre. But it's not a no, is it? It's a have a really good think about how the task actually allows students to demonstrate the specifications and syllabus objectives. And I think Julia's going to add to that question, answer. Oh, you got it. <laughs> I was just thinking about a possible way you could do such a task. So you could potentially say you were writing for the Week in Australian magazine and you create a biopic sort of feature story um, with, with that central person being a character. And so you're providing you insight about the character or a different perspective about that character's actions. That would that kind of thing might potentially count. <laughs> we're just going to talk about this later. And just off the back of what Julie said, if you remember from the syllabus implementation workshops, I'm sorry to steal your thunder, Please, two no. seconds, Marley, but if you remember from the syllabus implementation workshops, when we spoke about construct validity of assessment, and we had an example about To Kill a Mockingbird, and it was, you know, write an editorial for the local tribune, deconstruct the case, talk about Atticus Finch, whatever it was. Some of the things we raised, um, there was a lot in that task that wasn't okay, but some of the points we raised regarding that task statement was how many things are you asking the kid to do in order to do the creative response? So if they've been engaging with creative writing and imaginative text, and so now you're asking them to take on, and this might be fine for your students, but if now you're asking them to take on quite a different genre, a non-fiction text to write fiction, that might work, but it may not. So, just keeping in mind that construct validity around scope and scale, how many hoops do the kids have to jump through in order to succeed in this task? We don't want to make it too difficult for them as well. That's not to say it won't work, but just keep it in mind. Awesome. Any other questions, insights that people would like to share? No, no hands? That's all right. Now, just a last thing that I'm not going to get to, but just wanted to point out is what can we actually do in our teaching and learning secrets to make sure that we're engaging with this um, key text, that we're not just focusing on the genre that our students are writing, but we're using our text as a way into that assessment. Um, I do a lot of textual analysis with my students, and. Um, I just did a bit of a theoretical task with the white earth if I was looking at landscape as character as my focus and I was going to give my students an intervention point. A task that I might do in class just to look at how Andrew McGowan um, makes his landscapes come alive um, is really looking at his language choices in a short section of the text. And I found this beautiful table in the new um, Oxford English for Queensland textbook um, for units one and two that I felt really helped unpack short text for students, so excerpts from longer texts as well, looking at what language features are actually helping the author construct character. And then you can imagine students being able to take that um, and use it themselves. So I've been kindly given permission to give you a copy of that table so you can have a look at the kind of questions you might give to students when analysing um, bits of text for a creative response or an analytical response really as well. Um, but I do highly recommend that textbook too because I've found that the level of um, guidance for textual analysis is really high. Um, all right. 
Any last questions before we finish up? As Katie said, she will be wandering around <laughs> if you need to ask her anything. Um, as well, you can talk to the QCAA when you've got a bit more time and a bit more specific thoughts, perhaps. And also continuing the conversation with each other outside because I think we get the most kind of ideas when we talk to other teachers and other schools and see what they're doing as well.